now we need to discuss some background info. So what is a general ledger? Do you remember? What is it used for? What is its purpose? Why do we need it? Summary. Summary of what happens. In, what happened in the accounts? Which accounts? In the business accounts. Correct. Okay. So, do you agree the business is going to have lots of different types of assets? Am I going to put all the assets in one account? No. No. It wouldn't make any sense yeah. because you need to identify the different assets. Okay. So, what assets can we get? Just give me two. Land. That's one, land yes. and building. Yes. And? And vehicles. Okay. Is a land Engine. and building the same as a vehicle? No. Why not? A land and building is not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> it's, yeah, correct. It's, it's two completely different items. Yes. So is it accurate to group them as one item? No. No. So we need to separate it and we need to show them separately. So the general ledger account, the GL account, is going to record individual accounts that follow a specific rule. Okay, so every account um, is going to have either a debit or a credit depending on what it is. Okay, so the account that's often spoken about is bank. What is bank? Asset. Correct. So it's one asset of many. Okay, because we get other assets like land and buildings, vehicles, and so on. Okay, so if I'm looking at the bank account, this account is going to record debits and credits. Okay, when I increase or when I decrease the bank. Okay. okay. Right, so what, what do we ha or why do we have a trial balance? We saw it earlier. It's a list of accounts. You saw the example. Debits on the side, credits on that side. So why do we need it? To see what's the income and the expenses. No. Income and expenses are seen in the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. What does the trial balance do? It checks what? Debits are equal to? Credits. Credits. Okay, remember the trial balance is just confirmation. It's to make sure that we can create an accurate set of financial statements because the statements will be based on the balances in the trial balance. Okay, because the trial balance is a summary of all the accounts in one like statement, if you will. Okay, but it's not really a statement, it's just a trial balance. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so that's why we need it. It's checking debits equal credits. If our debits equal credits, we know we've done things correctly. Right, and you get different types of trial balances. Obviously, you are going to be given a pre-adjustment trial balance because you are going to have to adjust. Once you've adjusted, then you'll have a post-adjustment trial balance. So you'll have debits and credits for accounts that have been balanced off. Okay, or you'll have a trial balance where the accounts have been, or the let's say the journals have been posted to the accounts and the accounts have been totaled up. Okay, so we've got the total, we've got the final balances in each of those accounts. Okay, so why is accounting important? What is its goal? Do you remember? To give a summary of the income and the expenses. And why do we need that summary? To see if we're making money, or, or if the business is making money. Okay, if the business is profitable, perhaps, or if the business is in a good or bad financial position, so do assets exceed liabilities or other reasons. Okay, so the key is decision making, creating value so we can have decisions uh, or make decisions and that's the information that we um, use in order to make decisions. Right, so we look at the financial statements and then based on that we can either say this is a good product or this isn't a good product or this is a good business or this isn't a good business. Okay, okay so it's always about decision making and again, what is the focus? Disclosure. Do you remember what that means? Disclosure is presentation or layout. So what the actual statement looks like. So that's why I've put a reference here for either pages in the textbook or pages in your 
study guide either or. Okay, so maybe just to turn to your study guide and just have a look at some of the example statements, that's all. Okay, remember it's format, it's how do these statements actually look like in terms of presentation of information. Okay, so the formula is OE equals capital plus minus profit loss minus drawings. You actually saw this earlier, um, it was on one of the separate slides. I just added it to this one as well, just to show the equity side of things. Because equity is exactly what the owner is entitled to. Okay, meaning what the owner actually has in terms of worth in the business. Okay. All right, now we need to look at the next bit, which is your journals. How many journals did you print? Ten bits. Is it just one or two or? I put in everything. Yeah, I know you printed everything, but how, how many? Five of each. Oh, five of each. Okay, nice. So y y you're just going to need um, one CRJ, one CPJ, because we're going to try to record some. But you've already used the journals again, um, before. All right, so again, basics, looking at journals. All right, so now you should be able to tell me what is an accounting journal? I asked you at the beginning. Do you still remember? Um, what do you mean? What it's is an accounting journal? How, how would you describe an accounting journal? It's where every income or every expense is captured. Yes. Okay, so you're capturing the income, expenses, capital drawings. You're capturing all the transactions. Do you agree? Yes. But... Do you record all the transactions in the same journal? No. No. So a journal does what? It groups the transactions. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so it's the grouping that's important. And these are the different groups that you can get. Okay, so on the next page, you've got the journals that you could possibly have. Cash receipts, cash payments, purchases, purchase returns, sales, sales returns. Right, so what am I going to group in the cash receipts and payments? What is the focus going to be? in those two journals? Buying and selling. Using what? Using? Cash. 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 Okay, so bank will either go up or down. Purchases, what are you going to see there? Money going out. Purchases, well, not money going out, because you're not, if, if it's money going out, it'll be cash payments journal, right? Oh, yeah. So, not money going out. What's the group? What's the focus? That group is going to be looking at what? Debtors or creditors? Correct. See, that's the, that's the focus. Right, so if I've got purchases, it doesn't matter if it's the purchase or if it's the purchase's return, it's going to be a debit or credit. Well, either a credit if I buy or a debit if I return. But you're going to affect the creditors. That's the key. Okay, because remember you're grouping. Okay, so now what am I grouping in sales and sales returns? Okay, yes, yeah, so the sales, which is your debtors, that's correct. Okay, so credit sales will be recorded in the sales journal, and the sales journal represents an increase in the sales. Okay, so just remember, journals are just boxes to group transactions. Okay, that's all it is. General journal, other adjustments. Okay, there's still one more there before you turn over. General journal. Hmm. What is it for? Other. Okay, and we are going to be processing adjustments. Uh, remember, we spoke about prepaid, accrued, some of those. Yeah. We're going to see them again, right? And you get lots of marks for recording those adjustments. Okay, because remember, what do you start with? You start with the tr um, trial balance, and then the trial balance is posted to the 
where does the trial balance get posted to? Or what is the trial balance used for? Creating a financial statement. Okay, because remember, what does the trial balance do? It checks that debits are equal to credits. And once you know the debits are equal to the credits, then can you draw up the statements? Yes, yes because then the statements will be accurate. Okay. Right, so let's see if you know what the effects are going to be for each of the different journals. Okay, so when you have one journal, there's going to be two things that are affected. Bank or creditors or um, debtors. So you've got those three groupings. Okay, from here, cash, creditors or debtors. And then it'll either be increased or decreased, depending. Right, so again, I've put chapter references here for the textbook and the study guide just for examples um, you'll actually draw up the journals so we'll use those templates just to practice the recording okay but before we get there um, cash receipts journal what accounts are going to be affected in that journal bank and receipts income yes okay so it could be any income, or it could even be capital. Do you agree? Getting money from the owner. Oh, uh, yeah. Right, so you could have debit, bank, and credit. Capital, potentially. Okay, payments. Bank is a benefit. Good, because it's decreasing. Payments. Asset decreasing. Okay, so what I have there in brackets is the working. Remember, I always emphasize the working, because that's the understanding. What did you write there? Asset. Okay, well, asset is one. What else could I pay for? What else could I pay for? Like any expenses. Correct. Yes. And maybe drawings. Do you agree? So I could pay for an expense, then I would debit the expense. I could pay for an asset, then I would debit the asset. I could pay for drawings and I would debit the drawings. Okay, so it doesn't matter what I pay. Could I pay a liability? Yes. Yes, you could. So then you'll debit the liability. Okay, so you, you pay lots of different things. It all depends. But can you change the credit? No, you can't. If I have cash payments, bank will always decrease. Okay, cash receipts, bank will always increase. increase. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Next two journals. Tell me what's happening here. Cash purchases, so it's money going out. Okay, so if money's going out, no. You always say money going out. Why? Is cash is cash um is cash being affected here? Yeah. No, it's a purchase, right? So who did we say we need to focus on if it's a purchase? Credits. Correct. So what's going to happen to the creditors? Going to decrease. Creditors, yes. Because are you going to owe more or less? You're going to owe more. Correct. Okay, so purchases will affect the creditors because the liability will increase. See, you got it. Now you've got the one half. What could I buy on credit? Okay, so you could pay for expenses on credit, so you could buy stationery on credit. Could you buy anything else on credit? Mm, you could buy assets on credit. You could, okay, so inventory, vehicles, and so on. Agreed. Okay, or other. There could be other things that you could buy on credit that relates to a uh, loan or liability. Okay. Purchases, returns. Creditors will be debited. Why? Because now you're giving it back. Correct. So now, would you have a bigger or smaller liability? Smaller. Correct. And liabilities decrease where? Decrease. Liabilities decrease where? On the credits. Correct. And that's what you've got. Okay. So there you go. You've got it. Then whatever you return would then be credited. 
Okay, so you'd either credit the expense or credit the asset, depending. And then you've got PRJ or PJ, depending on which journal you've got. Is it the returns or is it the purchase? Okay, focus here. Sales. Good. Yes. Okay, remember debtors belong with the sales. You can only have a debtor if you have a credit sale. So now what's happening to it? It's increasing. Nice. If the debtors are going to increase, what are you going to credit? Sales. Sales, yes. Okay, so if I sell something, I'm going to have income, and that income is owed, so the business will have a debit and a credit for the income. Sales returns journal. Okay, then debtors will be credited. Debtors would be credited. Why? Because they're returning whatever they bought. Correct. And then sales or income will be debited. Sales or income will be debited. Correct. Okay, because you're reversing it out. Okay, good. All right, so that's the focus. All right, then you've got slides here um, relating to the general, which is other, and you've also got some notes about the discounts, okay, which we'll look at. Okay, so the first bit is general journal. Can any transaction be recorded in the general journal? Yeah. Yes, you can, because the general journal just has a debit and a credit. But we want to try group the other transactions into separate journals because it makes it easier for accounting. Okay, so if I'm looking at unusual transactions, what could that be? What would an unusual transaction be? Um, oh yeah. Something that's not cash, that's not creditors, and that's not deb debtors. Can't you think of one? No. Other. Do you remember depreciation? Sort of? Yes, yes. Yes, I do. Okay, so now if you remember depreciation, how would you describe depreciation? Is it cash? No, it's the worth of the laptop. That's Correct. Down. Exactly. So do you agree it's not cash, is it credit? No. Is it debtors? No. no. Creditors? No. no. So do you agree it's none of those above, meaning it's general journal? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Another one could be, uh, let me just think, what else would you have covered before? We spoke about depreciation. Oh, let's talk about the adjustments. Prepaid expense. Cash? No. Credit? No. No. Prepaid expenses would be an adjustment, so it will go to the general journal. Okay. okay, so other accounting transactions go to the general journal. 